of the equipment here as well. All right, so I'll uh, take you back across uh, so you can see the remainder of the, uh, the sky and the beach of Port Douglas. Talk us through the challenges that we've had over the last couple of days and what it's taken to actually bring this event. The, the challenges are myriad. I can't, I can't tell you how many there were, but right now we're looking at the cloud cover. If the clips came 10 minutes earlier, 10 minutes later, we wouldn't have been able to share with everyone what we just saw this amazing miracle. Now we're looking at the clouds here and it's still beautiful out, but we can't see the sun at all. I cannot believe how much luck we had in actually coming through with this. I mean, Fitzroy had a great view the entire time, but for us, just looking at the clouds right now, I'm shocked uh, that we're at this position. It's the easy part, um, you know, the cameras, the telescope, solar panels, all the portable batteries and everything like that. Or can we get our equipment out of here before we get, we get drowned? So uh, yesterday, I noticed that uh, during our test broadcast, the came all the way up to our stage platform here. Um, yeah. So we've yeah. got a, what, a limited amount of time to, uh, to move the equipment and that type of thing. Yeah, for, for about an hour and a half yesterday, the stage platform actually became a boat. And uh, while it was not rising and falling, with them, it was completely surrounded by them. Uh, so with uh, the moon on the sun. That's right. So some of those images we saw earlier, I mean, Fitzroy's been uh, clear the whole time, but the images we had, absolutely amazing. Oh, um, unbelievable. So uh, I think we've been very lucky. All right. Thanks for having a chat, Ted. Thanks. I'll catch you later. Good job. And then just a moment, we'll actually have another view for you to see uh, the sun from Port Douglas.
So uh, the sun has just poked out and we are trying to, as quickly as possible, uh, get back that vision for you of the sun. Uh, at the moment, Fitzroy still has quite a view. You can see us uh, getting the uh, telescopes on the equatorial mount, uh, heading back over to the sun. And uh, at the moment, Charlie's just putting that uh, solar filter on it so we can actually bring you that vision. Spectacular views we're about to bring you um, from our very high magnification telescope. Check this out. This is beautiful. You can see a tiny amount of cloud just moving in front of the sun. As we get towards the end of the partial eclipse. Of course, all of this is being powered by solar power, utilizing the Panasonic HIT solar panels. So um, we have a very clear view of the sun at the moment as the moon uh, begins to pass the sun. About halfway now from the that we've undertaken of this kind. Back in May, on May 21st of this year, we actually uh, solar powered an annular eclipse that happened at May. Uh, that annual eclipse that happened at Mount Fuji, um, we actually uh, had a climbing expedition to get to the top summit, uh, something like 3.7 kilometers above sea level. At, uh, at the top of Mount Fuji, we actually brought all of those lithium-ion portable batteries as well and powered that broadcast. Now, we had around 200,000 people check out that stream. Uh, we've already had 600,000 people check out uh, this total eclipse here. So thank you so much for uh, tuning in and checking out uh, this broadcast for us. some of the highlights of the solar scene and the eclipse uh, in a few moments. As we do that, we're going to uh, interview the overall head of this project, uh, Mr. Tsugita from Panasonic in Japan. Uh, Tsugita-san, uh, who will be speaking in Japanese and I'll be translating. Real big worry until yesterday because the weather was not cooperating with us at all. But this time, a little different than Fuji, we actually had the opportunity to really have the weather on our side, uh, and as a result of that, uh, we were able to show you uh, really a, a spectacular picture that we're very, very happy with. Uh, we're on camera now. So I wanted to ask uh, also, in terms of bringing together the technical, Sides of this project, how difficult it was. Portable battery. Where was the most difficult part? 
We actually had 30 solar panels looking at and uh, working on all of the power generation for the project. The, the objective here was to try to come a really compact and efficient setup with nine solar panels, uh, which is what we did in everything that you're seeing here and from Fitzroy is paneled just by those nine solar panels. Is that right? And you can see over here, he's saying the Lumix cameras that we're using, these are not professional cameras, uh, they're what consumers use, they're not video cameras, uh, but we were able to actually use this together with the telescopes uh, to create and bring these amazing images for you. So what other uh, elements uh, in terms of different Panasonic products were used during this? Uh, very, very helpful. <laughs> So overall, are you really happy with the way this worked out? Very much, Mitsuzita. And we're back now on the sun. It's looking absolutely beautiful, so we're going to take a look at that. You can actually see some of the sunspots. Uh, I don't know how many we can count here, but I can see at least on my small monitor about six of them. Uh, obviously, uh, very, very interesting as we see about one third of the sun continue to be covered by the moon. design uh, the sets and how we uh, laid this entire project out in terms of sitting it on the beach. Corinne, were you happy with the way the project worked out? Oh look, it's absolutely fantastic. The team is great and I mean the whole setup here looks incredible and then just witnessing what just happened in the sky then. You know, the clouds parted, the sun came out, we were stoked, we were cheering, couldn't, couldn't ask for a better result. Are you getting sunburn right now? Yeah, so well that's, that's the lovely Australian heat you see, so you've definitely picked a great colour with your branding with the black. <laughs> it's getting a bit warm here, but hey, uh, that's why people fly all the way across the world to experience this great climate and a fantastic event like this. So are you going to be able to get everything out of the way before the tide picks it up again? I tell you what, we live in Australia, we're used to getting wet, we're used to the rough weather, so I think we can handle it. Power, what we did today, and Kevin is our director, uh, famous photographer, from Visual Obsession, that uh, had filled the entire team that actually was able to capture these images. So, you guys, your thoughts, what you saw the eclipse, what do you think? Kat, let's start with uh, James. I was very impressed. Um, yeah, the uh, it was quite eerie when it all came down to the end of the second. So, we we're very lucky when the clouds parted too. So that was. Uh, very good, and I hear we got some good footage on the other other site, so I'm keen to have a look at that. Yeah, how it all went there. Absolutely, Kevin. What do you think? Um, after the last couple of nights, I just can't believe that it turned out the way it turned out. And uh, Fitzroy was absolutely fantastic. Those guys got saturated last night, froze themselves to death with all the wind blowing up the uh, up the hill there at the lighthouse, and uh, they're over the moon at that end as well. And it was better than here even. Right, full eclipse. Um, all of the people were just um, just mesmerised by the whole thing. Well, thank you guys both for all of the amazing work that you did to make this happen. Really, really appreciate it. It was a great experience to share. Yep. Thank, thank you. you.